So you really want to be a millionaire, huh? Okay. So this entire series of Vlogmas 2020, we've shared with you in these episodes strategies about money. We share with you some mindset shifts about how to start thinking like a millionaire. We even laid down some thoughts and conversations on radio interviews I've personally done to expose you to a world of how millionaires think, act, and how they process issues and how they process money and they process the world and opportunities. So in this episode, we got a special treat for you because I'm giving you access to my personal mentor, Patrick Bet David, host of Value Tame with over 2.7 million subscribers, the number one channel online for entrepreneurs in the world, and also the most recent Wall Street Journal best-selling author of your next five moves. So please join me in my garage for a cigar as we go over these five points. Here we go, starting in three, two, one, let's go. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zappala here, healing to you from the Money Smart Garage. And I'm fired up for this episode, and uh, if you haven't done so already, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like, follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be following our YouTube channel called Seven Figure Squad. So let's get right into it. So my mentor, Patrick Ben David, has personally mentored my wife and I for six years and we've accumulated over $6.1 million in income since then. Why wouldn't we want our guys? Why wouldn't we want our people around him? So we hosted a special mastermind meeting for our top leaders who are running and driving their own cities and states from around the country to amass and come together in Dallas, Texas at the PHP agency and value Tainment headquarters in Addison, Texas. So in this first click, PBD shares who has a tendency to win most in business and quick hint, it's not who you think. Let's check this out. At some point, you're going to stop. We had a conversation when I landed at 11.45 with Mackie's, the day I landed back from uh, the Palm Beach flight that we had, and we had a conversation together. I said, you know, here's the one thing about rooms like this. There's many of you here. I know a lot of the faces. I know who you are. 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 I, I, know, I know who you are. We've had a conversation before when I was, I know, I know you guys. I know who you guys are. And I'll come and I'll look, and I'll hear them speaking. I'll hear them speaking. I'll hear him speaking. I'll see these guys, these guys, making in. I'll see everybody speaking, right? I'll see the guys speaking. And I come back and I ask myself, which one of them is not going to stop? Which one of you guys is not going to stop? Which one of you guys at one point is going to get uh, uh, comfortable and content? Which one of you guys thinks the biggest? Because whoever thinks the biggest, they know and stop. Who is that going to be? By the way, let me, let me give you a very simple statement here. It is never the most talented. It is never the most gifted. It is never. It's simply the person that's not going to stop. The person you fear going to war with or fight with in the streets is the guy that doesn't stop. You may pack a better punch. You may pack a better kick. You may pack anything else that's stronger. If you get tired after 30 seconds of fighting and that guy doesn't, he's going to whoop your ass simply if the other guy doesn't stop. It's very simple. I was watching a video the other day. A woman in the Middle East is walking with her purse. A man walks by her, slaps her in the head. She falls on the ground, slaps her in the head because a little bit of her hair is shown. That's how I was in the Middle East. I've seen this millions of times when I was walking the streets of the Middle East. Smacks her so hard, she falls on the ground. You know what she does? She gets up, chases him, swings at him. He's hitting her face, backhand, slap, punch, nonstop until he, he finally got tired. You know who didn't get tired? This woman has him on the ground. Bam, bam, purse, bam. The guy is knocked out. The lady's this big, the guy's this big. The guy packed the heavy weight, but she wouldn't stop. Whoever wins here is the person that doesn't stop. I don't care what color you are. I don't care what nationality you are. I don't care what degree you have. Woo! Listen, long time ago, when I first started business, nobody would thought to give me a shot. I was a single dad, had bad anger issues, PTSD. I just got divorced. A couple years before I started my financial services career, I actually filed Chapter 7 bankruptcy in 1996 in Orange County, California. Who would give this kid a shot? But 
I had a chip on my shoulder. I had a point to prove. I had a lot of pressure, but at the same time, I know deep down inside, I wanted to be somebody. Nobody thought this kid would even consider thinking about winning, let alone doing it. So if you're out there, you're watching this right now, and nobody knows who you are, you think that you're insignificant. You think that nobody's paying attention to you. Well, guess what? The only person that needs to be paying attention to you at this very moment is you. Look at yourself in the mirror. Give yourself more credit than you think you deserve. Forgive yourself for all the mistakes that you've made and find a way for you to move on and discover now a new day and say, you know what? I'm going to get better today. Okay, so good timing here because in this second point, the second takeaway here from this mastermind session, you know, people are looking at themselves in the mirror. They're analyzing their business. They're looking at their numbers. They're seeing what 2020 has done to them. They're seeing how they can improve in the next year, 2021, as they play financial and entrepreneurial offense. So somebody asked, Patrick, how do you know somebody's lying? <laughs> how do you know somebody's lying through the teeth? Let's see what PBD has to say. Let's check this out. I'm telling you right now, watch the difference between somebody in this room that makes a million, two million, five million a year that you never thought they would make the one million, two million, five million, and the rest of you, that person knows exactly who they wanted to be. And it's scary. You know why it's scary? Go in the mirror and look at yourself later on today, okay? Go size people up when they talk and look at the mirror and look at themselves and see how they talk. Look at their eyes. Just look at their eyes. Forget about everything else. Look at their eyes. You know what you'll tell when you look at someone's eyes? You will know if it's conviction, conviction speaking, if it's an act, if it's a joke, if it's they have no clue what they're talking about. You'll be able to tell that, that no one has any clue what they're talking about. Just look at them. You're like, yeah, this is BS. That's not them. Then you look at somebody who's talking and you're like, this guy's not just talking he believes in what he's saying. She believes in what they're saying. That person's going places. Look, look into my eye. Anyway, guys, listen, uh, <laughs> I wish I could see your eyes right now through your computer, through your iPad, maybe Facebook can. But uh, <laughs> Oh, thank goodness, okay, I'm back. Facebook, Instagram, I promise, no more spy jokes, okay? Okay, cool. All right, let's move along. Now, this next segment, this next takeaway is something that a lot of people just don't see behind the scenes. And oftentimes, entrepreneurs or people striving to be a first generation cash flow millionaire, they end up making money and they end up spending money too soon on the wrong things. So in this clip, I want Patrick to share a little bit about his secret behind the scenes that a lot of people don't see because he's you know, on the screen, he's, he's in front of a lot of people. This is some of the things that a lot of people don't realize about who Patrick but David is. Let's check this out. So this is how life works. You have your belief system. You can do it on your own. You can do it on your own. You can do it on your own. You don't need the help of the government. You don't need the help of the government. Yes, you do. Why are you thinking like this, rich people? Don't let them do this to you. Da, 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 da. Someone's going to win. Either you or them. I guarantee you. Someone's mindset's going to win in life. Guess which one's easier, this one or this one? This is a lot easier. 90% falls for it. How many people rely on title programs? How many people rely on all these checks that's being handed out? How many people? You know how, you know how much PPE we took from the government? Zero. I said, why do you think I never flew first class until last year? The biggest joke was past the CEO of the company and he never flies first class. That's why we have so much cash we're sitting on. That's why we can cut a check for three and a half million dollar technology we're not affected by. Because I flew coach and I'm six, four and a half. And I would sit in coach and people would say, oh, guy, you oh, you're coach? Yeah, what's up? <laughs> He's not making a lot of money. I'm like, oh, only if, if you only knew. <laughs> you only knew? I said, nah, now I got money in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> you run out of money, we're going to play office. That's what happens. So, so again, I'm, don't be intimidated by this because I wasn't like this before. But the moment I went like this, then I'm no longer intimidated by the competition. There you go, priorities, everybody. Priorities, financial priorities. Temporary sacrifice for permanent happiness. You don't wanna end up spending your capital away and you don't have the capital to spend and reinvest back into business because you're trying to look good too soon, too fast. All right, so now we transition to dinner. Where do we go to dinner? One of our favorite spots, Fogo de Chao. Who loves Brazilian steak? We love Brazilian steak, so uh, guys, Meat just kept coming out. We had all different cuts of steak. We had lamb coming out. We had, um, we had chicken coming out, uh, and dessert, you name it, nonstop. I mean, we even opened up with this uh, three-level, uh, what do you call it, seafood platter, lobster, oysters, 
crab, unbelievable. I love fogo de chão. We always grab cigars after dinner. So after dinner, we have dessert, but the real dessert is the leadership development conversations when we circle back together after dinner and we get to chop it up some more with PVD. There's always time for leadership development. Now, the sad part with the cigar lunch, due to COVID-19 restrictions, this particular cigar lunch had to close by 10 p.m. So what do we do? We pivot, we adapt. That is like the term of the pandemic of 2020. Pivot, adapt, adjust, overcome, still get done what you need to get done. And yet we still had conversations with PBD till the wee hours of the early morning. So many of our people from around the country, they are establishing new locations, they're establishing new cities. They're, they're brand new for some of them, brand new in business. They're new to the insurance industry. And a question came up about creating competitive company culture. So PBD, what type of company culture attracts people to want to stay? Now, as many of you may know, Patrick has interviewed tons of celebrities, uh, political figures, uh, key, uh, key leading influencing entrepreneurs. And in this case, an answer that you got inspired from is his interview with Sammy the Bull, who was a hitman in the mafia. What? When we do that, when we have that kind of a culture, there is trust. One of the main words we used at signers was safety. Safety is the most, one of the most important words you will have in a community, okay? Like think about Sammy the Bulkervano, right? Here's a mobster who would do anything for John Gotti. The mo he says, dude, anything. I'm a die hard, committed to the whole lifestyle of La Cosa Nostra. I'm Italian, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all in, right? What happens? When he finds the recording of what Gotti said about him in the recording, he flipped. It's no longer safe. I never faced my friend, my co-defendant, wanting to put me away. That's what they're doing, John. Is that what you really want to do? It has to be done. The streets needs me, the boss. You're the sacrificial lamb. I said, okay, you're sure. But that's the way it is. And I got in touch with the FBI. I flipped and I was gone. Hmm. And then it's over when it's no longer safe. You can't have that kind of an environment. We have a very safe environment. So now do you see how important loyalty is? And by the way, loyalty and trust, it's a two-way street. People got to feel safe and protected with inside that environment and not feel they're ever going to be compromised, that they don't have to watch and look over their own backs. So now do we fight internally to compete and call each other out and up? Of course we do, since it's for the good of what we're looking to accomplish together collectively. I mean, look at that. Once people start looking over the back and not trusting one another, look what happened. Even though it's an illegal entity, but the principle still remains the same. Once people don't feel safe around you and they don't feel their brother or their sister or their coworker or the, the future movement where it's going because we were wondering who's going to rat each other out, there goes the company culture and more importantly, there goes the company. Next is a clip of one of our guys asking a question about reaching milestones or more importantly, having a vision. And the question goes along the lines of, how do you keep going knowing once you've set upon this path and you reach this milestone or you reach a certain status or you reach a certain goal, what's next? How do you keep going and how do you keep expanding that vision? Let's check this out. My competition is the vision. If the vision's here, I'm here. How the hell can I be cocky? I'm not even done anything yet. Yeah. Yeah. I can't be cocky. But if my vision is to be him, then I'm cocky. Yeah. So in my opinion, if a vision is attached to a monetary goal, my friends, it is too small and too short of a goal. You're going to stop. You're going to marinate there. You're going to hang out there. And guess what? In our book, it's either you're growing or you're dying. You won't advance. You're going to potentially hit millionaire status and you think that you're automatically going to hit it again in the next year and the next year and the next year unless you continue to grow, unless you continue to develop. I've seen a lot of people make $500,000, chill, marinate, quit, and, and, and next, you know, their next year reduces to $400,000. Uh, or they reach a million dollars, that's always going to come. I'm not going to grow. I'm not going to innovate. I'm just going to sit, marinate, not innovate. Next you know, they're less than a million dollars a year in cash flow. So they lose their first generation cash flow millionaire status. So the idea there is to attach your goals and status and vision to a vision greater than money. You know, one of the reasons why Sheena and I continue to grow, and this is probably some of our competitors are watching this too as well, back to the first point, you just don't know who's gonna win. Nobody gave me a shot. And since I got this flavor in my mouth right now, and I feel like I'm in the prime of my business, and once I'm feeling this momentum, I'm not letting 
momentum, stop dancing with us. We're continuing to grow. We're continuing to tap into this potential, crack open. Wow, I can do this. Wow, I can do that. It cannot be stuck just because I'm a millionaire or stuck just because I made 500,000 or stuck because I made two million or five or $10 million. If that means that unlocking the best of us means we make $5 million a year or $10 million, a year, so be it. But that doesn't mean we stop growing. We don't sit back and say, okay, we're gonna kick back, relax, count our money. Why? Because the same principle applies at that level, at any level saying it's either, again, you're growing or you're dying. The choice is yours. That being said, guys, I'd love to know your thoughts, your feedback, your follow-ups, your comments. Please drop them in the comments section below. You know, I love this interaction we got going on. There's a lot of people here and I never thought we'd discover interacting with here on YouTube or Facebook. I appreciate our interaction and appreciate our engagement we've had together and get to know some of you guys, people I never thought I'd be reaching with, with this type of content. So with that being said, guys, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our Facebook page, Money Smart Guy. If you haven't done so already, please mash that like button. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, guys, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.